Hey, what's going on? Uh, Christian Carter with Radius Financial Group, and today answering yet another question uh, from the top 10 Googled questions by potential home buyers in 2022. And that question is, how long does it take to get approved for a mortgage? And in true Christian Carter style, I could answer this question very easily. Um, but I'm going to peel back the onion and we're going to go into some of the details instead, right? All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, how long does it take to get approved for a mortgage? So the short answer is 30 days, right? So hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, I'm Christian with Rich. Just kidding around. Uh, we're going to dig a lot deeper into it than that. So the short answer is for thir is 30 days, right? Um, now, a couple ground rules here. We're talking about a residential mortgage. We're talking about probably you know, you buying your own primary residence, right? A house to live in. And we're talking about using a conventional mortgage like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, um, one of the government loans like FHA or VA. So one of your standard cookie cutter mortgages uh, of a house that you're going to live in, right? So we're not talking about commercial. We're not talking about investment property or anything like that, right? So the short answer is about 30 days is what it takes. But let's go into the details right now. All right, first up here on the list, uh, pre-qualification and or pre-approval, right? So pre-qual or pre-approval. Um, now, I know I shot a video on this um, back in the past. Feel free to check out that. Uh, it explains the difference uh, between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval. Um, but for, for our purposes today, we're going to lump them together. So this process generally takes a few days, right? And this is kind of the first step in the home buying process, right? That's when you reach out to someone like me, a mortgage loan officer, uh, we go over your income, your credit, your asset, uh, assets, you know, what kind of home you're looking to buy, what area, things like that. And I just want to hit on one topic here uh, real quick. The more documents you can provide during this prequal or pre-approval stage, the better, right? Because that is going to uh, make your offer that much stronger. And it's going to make your pre-approval letter or pre-qualification letter that much stronger when you go to make an offer um, on a property. So more documents you can provide, the better. Um, after the after the pre-approval, pre-qual step, uh, next step is mortgage application. So what happens right here is you essentially, once we get to the mortgage application step, that's when you have an accepted offer on a home. Uh, you've already done your home inspection. Uh, sellers have accepted your offer. And now we're ready to start the actual uh, mortgage process, right? So Big thing here is submitting a complete mortgage application. And of course, in the mortgage industry, we love documentation. We can't get enough of it. Uh, so we're gonna ask for updated documents like updated pay stubs, updated bank statements, uh, things like that, right? And this process right here, the mortgage application, it takes a couple weeks, right? So in order to build this complete mortgage application, it's going to take a couple weeks, right? And then we move on to the underwriting stage. And as a good, as a general good rule of thumb, there's during the underwriting process, there's going to be some back and forth between the borrower, uh, the person who's actually buying the home, uh, the processing department and the underwriter. So typically the borrower will never speak directly with uh, the underwriter. Uh, the underwriter will go through like a loan processor or a loan analyst or something like that. We just call it processing, right? But there's going to be a lot of back and forth here. Underwriter is going to ask questions about, you know, how long were you employed? You know, why was there a why was there an employment gap? You know, for a week during this time period. Um, why is there this credit thing or derogatory credit uh, showing up in your credit report? You just kind of go back and forth answering uh, questions that the underwriter has brought up, right? And that process again takes a couple weeks. So that's that's kind of the underwriting uh, step, right? Now, next one here, number four, appraisal and property evaluation. This is happening concurrently with the mortgage application and with the underwriting process, right? So we don't wait to we don't wait to have the borrower complete the underwriting process to start work on the property evaluation. We do that up front with the mortgage application. So this is gonna take a this is gonna take a few weeks, and again, it's happening concurrently with the underwriting uh, process, right? And essentially all this is, step four, is that we're going to have, a, have an appraiser go out to the property, um, evaluate the home, right? We're going to make sure that 
if you're buying the home for $300,000, that the home is in fact worth $300,000. And uh, that appraiser is going to make sure that the property uh, meets specific lending guidelines to whatever pro, uh, mortgage program that you're using, whether it's FHA, VA, um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, something like that, right? So we're gonna make sure uh, that the property meets those specific guidelines. Hopefully it does, and hopefully it comes in at the right value. Uh, so we're good to go there. If there are issues uh, during the appraisal and property evaluation kind of step, then that's when you that's when you go in and work with the uh, work with the sellers uh, to figure out what you're going to do. Again, I have another video on that. And then finally, here uh, step five: final approval and closing. So this essentially takes about a week. Um, it's when underwriting says, "Okay, underwriting says we have the complete mortgage application." Um, we have the appraisal back from the appraiser and the property meets all the guidelines. We've already underwritten the borrower, so they're good to go. So underwriting gives their final stamp of approval. And then we move to the final approval and the closing process, right? This takes about a week and we're going to coordinate with the other parties. So we're going to coordinate with the sellers, with the seller's attorney, uh, with the borrower's attorney. Make sure we're all on the same page for a closing on you know, July 15th or March 3rd or whatever. Um, so it just takes some time, about a week to coordinate everything with that. The only other big thing with the final approval and closing um, is that the borrower needs to acknowledge the CD, right? And of course, CD stands for closing disclosure. Very, very, very important document um, in this mortgage process. Everything we talked about right here from pre-approval to mortgage application to appraisal to underwriting, the most important document for the borrower, the person buying the home, is going to be that CD, that closing disclosure. Um, and they need to electronically acknowledge the closing disclosure prior to closing on the home. So that's a big, big step. So again, uh, easy, easy question to answer. How long does it take to get approved for a mortgage? Uh, about 30 days. But of course, uh, we had to break it down and go further into depth uh, just to explain some things. So I hope you like this video. As always, please give me some more topics. Um, I love making these videos and I love answering your questions and have a good day. See ya.